Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome you all to this uh, panel discussion. Uh, we have a very eminent set of panelists today uh, to discuss the importance of building a geospatial infrastructure for the nation. I'd like to start by introducing our panelists. Uh, we have Mr. Gorang, Ra Gorang Rathi. Uh, he's the Municipal Commissioner of Varanasi and CEO of Varanasi Smart City Corporation. Uh, he's a 2014 batch IS officer of Uttar Pradesh cadre. Mr. Rathi was born in the year 1987 in Merat district of Uttar Pradesh. Seeing the magistrate residence next to his house, he got inspired and he wanted to be a part of Indian administrative service. And uh, he realized his dream. And uh, after schooling, he, he joined uh, IIT Delhi initially and uh, graduated in textile engineering and later on appeared for uh, Indian administrative services examination in 2014 and secured 40th position. So it was really high, high rank. And he's a skilled officer as well as a good, good sportsman. Uh, his interests are in sports like football and cricket. The work style and accountability of Mr. Rati is considered to be a quality and a source of inspiration for all. The projects implemented with his vision have always benefited people of cities like Varanasi. The next panelist is uh, Professor Dheeraj Kumar. Uh, he is presently Dean uh, Innovation, Incubation and Entrepreneurship at IIT Dhanbad. He is also the Project Director of Technology Innovation Hub in Mining as set up by Government of India. He did his MTech from IIT. Uh, which, which was earlier Indian School of Mines, Dhanbad and PhD from IIT Kharagpur. He has more than 18 years of experience of teaching and research at various organizations. His areas of expertise include survey, geomatics and IT applications in different earth sciences domains. Dr. Kumar has published more than 70 technical research papers in various international and national journals He's also authored several books in the area of advances in, in mining, surveying, and application of IT in mining. He's the recipient of National Merit Scholarship, Meritorious Scholarship Award at IIT Kharagpur in consecutive years during 2000 to 2003. And he was also awarded uh, by uh, award, uh, Hindustan Zinc Limited's award by Institution of Engineers and State Bank of India's award as second best researcher of ISM during the years of 2012 to 2017. Next, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Dev Priya Datta. Uh, he completed his PhD from Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi, and joined National Agriculture Research Service of Indian Council of Agriculture Research. He served as scientist in Central Soil and Water Conservation Research and Training Institute, Dehradun. And then he joined National Resource Data Management System Division of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India in 1994 as senior scientific officer and was serving in the same department as scientific, scientific, scientist F till May 2008. Thereafter, he was appointed as counselor science and technology in the at the Embassy of India in Washington, D.C. Uh, during uh, 20, 2000. 8 to 2012, while he was in Washington, D.C., his responsibilities included handling the India and U.S. science and technology cooperation at policy project and program levels in sectors like health, energy, climate, and environment, and education. Uh, currently, he is serving as head and advisor, Scientist G, in Space and Equity Empowerment De De Development Division of Department of Science and Technology in Government of India. Our fourth panelist is Mr. Amit Bhargav, Senior Director, Senior Technical Director, Scientist F at, uh, of Geospatial Technology and Services Division of NIC. Mr. Bhargav is a BE Civil from Vishweshwaraya National Institute of Technology, Nagpur, which he, which he completed in 1989. Later, he did his Master's in Urban Planning from School of Planning and Architecture uh, in Delhi. That was in the year 1991. Mr. Bhargav worked at IRS Dehradun as scientist from 1992 to 1995, 
in Human Urban Settlement Analysis Group Division, and he's now working as Senior Technical Director in Geospatial Technology and Services Divisions of uh, National Informatics Center, New Delhi, since 1995. So I'd like to thank all the panelists for taking their valuable time to join, join us for this, this discussion, uh, which is about building a geospatial infrastructure for the nation. Uh, why did we choose this, uh, this subject? Uh, India has uh, embarked on a journey to transform the nation into a $5 trillion economy by 2025. To achieve this vision of a new India, government aims to leverage technology to solve core challenges across various sectors, such as agriculture, water, uh, healthcare, infrastructure, uh, and, and all other segments of economy so that uh, we can grow the, 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 the national geospatial economy from 30,000 crores to 1 lakh crores by the year 2030. Geospatial infrastructure will play a very crucial role uh, in, in our achieving this vision. In the draft national geospatial policy, government has highlighted the need and process for setting up national data registry and geospatial platforms for storage and dissemination of geospatial data. The draft policy also defines the need for sectoral geospatial infrastructure to integrate, maintain, disseminate, and preserve geospatial data to make it more useful to public, enhance operations, support decision making, and increase reporting to public and to the governments. Geospatial infrastructure consists of content, data, maps, apps, and GIS system apart from usual IT infrastructure like system, storage, networking, etc. Geospatial infrastructure helps organizations bring the data together for internal and external source from internal and external sources so that it can be consumed in their apps. It can be used for creating maps and dashboards, which in turn help in decision making. Geospatial infrastructure can also include geo portals or geo platforms for sharing of data, maps, apps and dashboards, both within the organization as well as outside the organizations through web services and APIs. Multiple initiatives are being taken by Government of India to promote innovation and ease the building of geospatial infrastructure. Opening of Indian space sector for private participation, deregulation of geospatial data, and now the policy framework for simplifying drone usage are some very, very important steps. Even the use of geo portals is recommended across most of the missions and programs of national importance, such as urban transformation, infrastructure, water, governance, and many more. So this panel will discuss the opportunities, challenges, and innovations that we need to bring in to realize the vision of a new India and how GIS is helping and can further help through geospatial infrastructure that would leverage latest in technology to not only support current programs, but also in sustainable growth of the nation. So uh, that was my brief introduction uh, about uh, this particular subject. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now I would uh, like to uh, come back to the eminent panelists today and uh, ask them uh, their views about some of these important areas and the areas where they have been working and, uh, and, and creating applications and supporting the nation in their own ways. So I'd like to start with uh, Dr. Dheeraj Kumar, uh, the professor at IIT uh, Dhanbad. Dr. Kumar, you've been associated with ISM for over 20 years and specialized in mining survey and geometrics. And have, you've been also running geometrics programs at ISM for a very long time. Uh, study of geometrics has been mostly limited to certain academic disciplines and research areas. What have been the challenges? Do you see the overall scenario changing over the years and how? And I'd also like you to highlight what are the enabling geospatial technologies that students should be equipped with and how will that, how will that help in their careers when they join uh, government or industry? 
थैंक यू सो मच अगेंद्र जी एंड आई एम थैंकफुल टू बी एस आर आई एज ए होल फॉर पुटिंग मी टू दैनल कंसिडरिंग माइनिंग टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट वर्टिकल्स फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द कंट्रीज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड अदर थिंग्स Yes, uh, we have been running empty geomantic program for last fifteen uh, years, and uh, initially we found lots of uh, roadblocks in running these programs. But now this program has been highly picked by interdisciplinary groups of students uh, from civil engineering background, from computer science background, from electronics background, from mining background, from other geosciences background, and uh, they are highly placed in the industry also. The hurdles uh, what I am finding right now uh, the proper inputs. people they are more inclined towards uh, computer knowledge gaining computer knowledge and applying gis technologies uh, working in uh, silos but they never think for uh, the base of a successful uh, uh, venture of the geospatial technology the successful venture of geospatial technology will lie in data acquisition if you acquire data properly accurately then certainly data extraction and data processing and data representation will come up but data acquisition will certainly play a very crucial role and there we are finding that our students they are lacking in they are not trying to go to the field getting the data acquired we don't have any limitations nowadays in terms of instrumentations we have plenty of instrumentations let it be technology related to drone technology related to related to geotic surveying technology related to remote sensing surveying we have sufficient data sets available for uh, capturing the entire gamut of uh, different uh, technology verticals but uh, we are lacking our students are lacking in getting the data acquired technology for data acquisition they are lacking in data processing but they are good at uh, gis technologies so we are now trying to mold our empty geomantic program in such a way that they will have some more exposure in going to the field acquiring the data working on the different instrument setups finding out how accurately data can be acquired how accurately data can be processed and then they can be represented in a much much better way so that uh, the basic purpose of this specific technology can be visualized uh, for different verticals of the country now i'll just give you a brief brief on uh, what is the government's vision you might have come across uh, technology innovation hubs government of india has set up 25 technology innovation hubs across the country in 25 top institutions of the country and they have been given different mandates on different technology verticals itism has been given mandate on leading cyber physical systems in mining applications and when i try to foresee the cyber application systems in mining vertical again i find there is a road block and the road block is data acquisition if you talk about digitalization of mining system as a whole first step which comes in the picture is digitization and in the digitization process its a gis or geospatial technology as a whole will certainly play a very crucial role there we have to do the capacity building first so that our students our miners our mine professionals our earth science professionals they can do digitization process in much much better way and once they do the digitization the next step will be digitalization so this cyber physical system in mining will certainly rely on digitalization technology to start with and here geospatial technology will certainly play a very big role right yeah thank you sir i think you have summarized this very well and the data digitization challenge uh, yes it is a manpower uh, intensive activity and having a lack of adequate capacity is a challenge of course today technology provides some uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning tools Uh, to increase the speed of uh, digitization uh, uh, to some extent uh, uh, otherwise i think many organizations are also trying to work uh, in creating a larger capacity uh, in the country because capacity requirement is definitely very very important for for all of us so uh, i thank you very much and uh, uh, next question i would uh, like to uh, ask mr Uh, Mr. Rathi, yeah, Mr. Mr. Rathi is uh, is the Municipal Commissioner of Varanasi Municipal Corporation and the CEO of Smart City, Varanasi Smart City. Uh, there are a number of uh, areas in which Varanasi Smart City has 
try to improve it, improve the citizen services. Uh, these are better property management, smart citizen services such as waste management, traffic light management, cash, and they've also set up Kashi command and control center, uh, which was which also used for COVID-19 management. So, uh, so Mr. Rathi, you've been, uh, you know, very active in improving the services to citizens in the state, in the city of Varanasi, and a lot of good work has been done under your guidance. Uh, I would like to share that what have been the most critical elements that help you propagate your vision of the use of geospatial infrastructure across different departments of the city. Uh, so basically, when you ask me what have been the critical elements that help make my vision, uh, then I think uh, uh, my uh, you know my summation would be that I'll be using a couple of examples, and from that I'll try to elucidate or tell as to how we have worked around the critical elements that you are asking about in achieving the final outcomes. So the first example would be of COVID management, how GIS has been useful in uh, helping us manage COVID overall. <clears throat> and very interestingly, it is in continuation to how historically, uh, you know, these maps have been used to overcome a, a public problem, a public issue. which. I think we were again not able to hear. In and in fact, the same th thing was for the policy makers to visualize as to how to, you know, uh, use it for the benefit of citizen uh, and overcome the issue of cold outbreak in the city. Uh, so similarly, as we know, GIS also is basically bringing together of data and everything that has to be done with it, with a map layout having all the features of, uh, of that particular geography and all the tools that goes with uh, managing that data in the form that we think is important to get a particular outcome. So in case of COVID also, uh, we develop different heat maps, different layers from the base layer uh, to not only chalk out our strategy as to which areas are to be targeted as per the hotspots, which was a, uh, which was you know organic in a way that it used to change by every couple of hours or so but also to map out as to how best we can deliver our services whether it be the groceries whether it be uh, whether it be you know a milk something as simple as that by by placing our by tracking our movement through gps systems on the base map developed through gis so uh, so i have uh, briefly touched upon different services and gamut, the whole array of services that were a part of, uh, you know, our strategy, how we use GIS, and it helped us get tremendous results. So, so not only we felt that we were in control of situation, which was a big thing to feel, given how the COVID panned out during wave one and wave two, but uh, we we could be at some places, of course, at not all the places, but at some places, a step ahead of the pandemic. Which believe me is something uh, unthinkable if we would have gone about doing it the mundane way and the normal way. Uh, similarly, you talked about property tax management system wherein we have been using GIS. So, so the second critical element uh, that would come out after the first one I pointed out wherein we are using the GIS layers uh, directly for a relevant property so that in the mind of people, this is a very handy tool, and there was nothing more, nothing better than having it being used in COVID, because it not only helped people realize that how relevant it is, but it also helped people realize that how well it can adapt to any situation, uh, which can be of such a scale as as COVID was and is still is. Uh, so second, I'll give off uh, some some service amongst various services that municipality pans out. So we also are having our roads and uh, uh, all the utilities that includes sewerage and uh, uh, you know drinking water pipeline panned out on GIS layers. So this is not only helping us, and we are in the nascent stage of using it. This is not only uh, not only helping us 
uh, map better as to how best we are able to uh, tackle a particular problem that is coming at a certain area. And from uh, administrator's point of view, I can have a you know vantage point view of the whole city. But it's but it all it is also capturing data as to <clears throat> what part of uh, my utilities or what length of my utilities have. Uh, uh, you know, have uh, lived their lifespan, wherein uh, you know I need to plan in advance uh, so that you know we don't foresee issues in those areas which have uh, you know run their lifespan. This is just one of the example of how we are using it as a tool to plan to give better services. And similarly for property tax management, wherein we have gone a step further, a couple of steps further, and actually implemented it. For so even uh, implementation as uh, low as 40% 40, 40 of the results that we have got after plotting all the properties in GIS. We have been able to escalate our properties to uh, property tax collection from 32 CR uh, to 55 CR in a couple of years. And uh, and I'm being, uh, you know, I'm not mincing words when I say we have been able to implement it for by only 30-40% because ultimately the uh, important element challenge is that getting the language of information uh, map to our, uh, you know, our understanding in the field of field practitioners and how they are able to gauge and, and you know, and convert it into a language where they are able to readily use it. By that I mean the property tax data people had apprehensions that a satellite sitting remotely somewhere uh, might not be doing justice to what actually is on the ground. So when we actually went about doing a, an exercise of uh, checking the data with the field practitioners, we found that these redundancies were pretty low and that helped gain traction that this authenticity of the data that we are developing not only is pretty accurate but is also ready to be used to get us the results. So, so I think these are the two critical elements of acceptability and having the data refined in a form to be used by a field practitioners for us to get instant results. So uh, I think that at this I'll uh, sum up my case that these have been the critical elements and without this uh, uh, rest would always be jingoism uh, uh, and this convertibility into a language and into a currency of accept which has acceptance wide acceptance both for the uh, administration as well as people would be the ultimate thing that would bring it you know that sort of traction that makes it uh, irreplaceable tool right so you very rightly pointed out that uh, having the good having good quality data is very important to get confidence of uh, citizens. And uh, in your position, you deal with citizens and their grievances and their benefits all the time. Uh, so it's, it becomes all the more important that the information that the that the city administration collects and uses uh, is something which is uh, accurate so that they do not see that they have been put to a advantage. And also, uh, also heard to use uh, a GIS for COVID management is, is a fairly important one and very well implemented because uh, we've been working with your city for quite some time and, and we know that a lot of officers have worked really very hard in Varanasi uh, over the last one year in managing the COVID situation. Uh, I would uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Rathi. I would now uh, uh, move to uh, Dr. Datta. Uh, he's the head of uh, Seed and uh, State Science and Technology Programs uh, at Department of Science and Technology. And DST is leading the overall uh, policy framework to expand the geospatial economy of the country. And DST is also, over the last couple of months, have come out with new guidelines and draft policy, uh, which has removed a lot of restrictions that existed for the cre creation, processing, and use of geospatial data. So these have been some very, very important steps, uh, which have been welcomed both by government organizations and industry together uh, in a very big way. So I'd like to uh, uh, request uh, Dr. Datta uh, to share his views about the deep Deregulation of geospatial data has been like a game changer. It's a game changing step for the entire geospatial economy. And as I'd mentioned in the in the event in the in the session brief in the beginning, that country is really looking to expand the geospatial economy. So uh, what have been the driving factors for DST for 
transforming this policy and uh, what other steps uh, is gst planning to further take to enable the growth of geospatial economy of the country uh, thank you uh, again raji and uh, you know uh, good afternoon to all of my co panelists and uh, the other uh, you know viewers here uh, uh, again raji like you know I, i'm someone uh, actually it was not uh, told that you know i am involved uh, as a uh, you know associated head in the national geospatial program here also which was earlier nrdms where natural resource data management system which is one of the national geospatial program which government of india has developed along with the natural uh, resource uh, information systems or nnrms earlier of the department of space and also the disnic and the nic is the current you know the the bharat map earlier was in the disney so uh, some uh, uh, like you know someone who is almost three decades involved into and observed the geospatial ecosystem developed in the country the uh, it's not only country in the globally also the role of the geospatial uh, you know the the information has come more uh, you know from the proof of concept stage of in the uh, you know the decision making and where uh, the, the, uh, the like you know the locating the object to as part of an uh, you know the efficiency improvement of an uh, enterprise which uh, depends upon the locations and which drives uh, the commerce which drives the you know, the logistics uh, the uh, the development and uh, you know like so so government of india uh in over the time like the 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 whole geospatial ecosystems over this you know the, if you see in the last three decades has evolved as an integrated part in the backbone of the economic development of the country so uh government of india acknowledges that the availability of a comprehensive highly accurate granular and constantly updated uh, geo uh, geospatial data and information is an essential Uh, for the you know the uh, for the benefit of the diverse sectors of the economy and definitely will significantly boost the innovations in the country for the knowledge generations which will go in developing this uh, you know the sectors and the the entire geospatial ecosystem which starting from uh, i think if uh, if we if you look it into it the the entire your this uh, the the discussion section it's you know depending on the geospatial thinking so it's starting from the geospatial thinking the geospatial science the geospatial technology uh, the geospatial infrastructure the geospatial uh, you know the these the solutions the ships development the capacity building so the entire the ecosystem itself should be looked into and that's the way the government feels that this is the time to uh, you know the unshackle the, uh, the 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 geospatial data and the informations uh because as you know that the with the advent of the publicly available geospatial services a lot of geospatial data which used to be in the restricted zones are freely and commercially now available and uh, you know the the policy and guidelines that used to regulate such informations are also become obsolete and the you know the redundant uh, actually globally as you know like many of our spatial data are available so there is no use of regulating that and under, with this understanding with a focus on atmanirbhar bharat where the geospatial uh, you know the information can play a big role because you know 70 to 80% of the activity of the services and the governance in the business sectors are locations of the geospatial based these li the liberalizations of the guidelines is a long pending actions which has you know culminated with a uh, with a with a demand from various stakeholder community of the geospatial ecosystem in the country where you know usri is also in uh, you know the large uh, the, the the stakeholders and as you know like the uh, already uh, mr rathi was talking about that how it has uh, you know like been extensively become an important part of the various important part of the the, the, the governance so the if you see into the core of these uh, liberalization guidelines the it is is that there is no requirement of the prior approval the security clearance licensing or the other restrictions in the collections generations preparations dissemination storage publications and updations or the dig digitizations of the geospatial data and maps uh, within the uh, with, within the territory of the india 
So the individual companies, any in organizations, any government agency, they're free to process the acquired geospatial data, build applications, and develop solutions in relating to such data and data products, uh, and by way of selling, distributing, sharing, swapping, disseminating, and and so on. So self-certifications will be used to convey the adherence to these guidelines. As a result of that, now from the in the many uh, uh, due to the stakeholder sectors, already we are getting lot of uh, you know the, the uh, requests here now if you look at into that that what government of india is also thinking in order to this liberal not only to liberalize it but to how to utilize this you know the advantage of the liberalizations as uh, again Rajin, like you, know, you will appreciate if you look into this total geospatial ecosystem and the business ecosystem particularly till that it was mostly the government as a the the main, uh, you know, the data supplier, the private sectors in associations with the government, within the boundary of the government business, so, you know, uh, generating the, uh, you know, the information uh, uh, and and also the, uh, you, you know, the services and also, you know, supplying it to the government itself. This needs to be expanded. This And, and, and that's basically the basic, uh, you know, the focus on the, uh, this liberalization, um, uh, you know, of the guidelines, but that needs to be, you know, uh, supported with the development of a huge geospatial, uh, you know, the infrastructure. And the core of that is the geodetic infrastructure, the geodetic infrastructure for the horizontal, vertical, gravity, tidal, datum, improving that. Because as uh, as long as our geospatial data generations, the accuracy uh, will be uh, almost to the near field. The, the, the economic value of that cannot be totally unleashed. So that's an important component of the uh, government is focusing on the geodetic infrastructure, the Department of Science and Technology, understanding, you know, this requirement. We have a uh, national center for geodesy has been established in IIT Kanpur. And now, uh, you know, in the hub and spoke model, we are uh, is going to establish many of these, uh, you know, the geodetic centers in the different national, uh, you know, the, the knowledge institutions so that, you know, like they, we can create the manpower for the geodesy. Like currently, the situation is like that, that, you know, there are not many, uh, you know, the, the manpower available in these directions. We need a huge digital infrastructure for that. It's basically Métis. Uh, is working, uh, you know, uh, uh, hugely for providing the digital infrastructure, and we have increased. Uh, we have also improved a lot. We need an integrated geo hub and knowledge platform for that. Our national spatial data infrastructures working with the many, uh, you know, the the governmental ministries and the departments, so that we can have a national, not only a national data industry but the standardized way of data supply in the different sectors and also the integrations of the data online on a click to develop in data infrastructure and the uh, if you see the like ultimately again you know one of your important uh, you know focus of this sessions per se is the the role of the geospatial in the sustainable development india as an uh, you, you know the, the the founder member of the UN group of geo geo informations and the management is playing a very active role in the uh, you know the global uh, the, the arena to adopt the integrated geo informations framework and it has been decided that this integrated geo information framework which has the nine different components which includes not only the um, uh, you know the technical component. And the infrastructure, but also the policy, you know, the, the the capacity building as an integrated way to be adopted in the context of the uh, of the countries, uh, you the framework for the development in order to support this unleashing and the opening of the data. Because unless and until we can create the entire geospatial, we can really uh, develop the entire geospatial, uh, you know, the value chain and this geospatial ecosystem. Uh, 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 like pertinently, if you look into the, the geospatial policy, what we are thinking of initially, the focus was mostly on the geospatial data and information making it available. From that, what it has, you know, now evolved into the how to catalyze the entire geospatial ecosystem, so that uh, you know, like the, the the way our telecom, uh, you know, sector has grown, it is a time that the geospatial sector should also be developed in the country in that way. 
on on one way that we contribute to the five trillion dollar uh, you know the economy of the country. The other way it strengthens the the uh, you know the sustainable development goal examples at the uh, at the field level. Because as a result, like the all these stakeholders, starting from the industry to the civil organize uh, to the uh, you know the civil society should be a partner and should take a you know active role in uh, you know this developing the 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 integrated geospatial information framework in the country for taking the advantage of this uh, you know the deregulation deregulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Datta. Very good insights about the thought process which has gone behind some of these changes and i i totally agree with uh, what you've said that uh, uh, that geospatial sector needs attention like some other sectors like telecom got in the focus from both government and private sector and private sector also needs to come forward in terms of data creation uh, and and making data available because excuse me government alone uh, cannot uh, cannot do that like it's it's been happening forever and now the data requirements of all the se sectors of the economy put together are so huge that uh, i think it's for us to to join hands between public and private sector to 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 bring both the capacities together so that whatever resources we have we can make use of those resources in creating that critical data and then the new policy guideline also talks about uh, i mean the I would say the draft policy also talks about setting up uh, this geo platforms uh, for further use of this data. I think those are very relevant steps and uh, it will really help in uh, help the country uh, in expanding the use of geospatial technologies and, and getting more value out of out of these. So, uh, so next question, I think I will ask uh, uh, Mr. Amit Bhargav. Uh, so Amit Bhargav, uh, say you have a very long and deep experience in working with a variety of organizations as being a part of NIC. So uh, uh, given the new policy framework that we have, uh, what would be some of your suggestions uh, for the different departments and ministries uh, for, for building their own geospatial infrastructure and, and using these technologies? Uh, what, I, what I mean is that what steps they should take to to consume these technologies uh, faster than what has been happening so far? Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me to this esteemed panel. And I've been listening to all the panelists and in total agreement with them, especially Mr. Rathi also, which he has been very good smart city for the Varanasi. So at NIC, our endeavor, our, our mandate is to empower all the government agencies do some kind of digitization, some kind of computerization, some kind of things so that things can be more transparent and can be put on, on a click of mouse. So we at NIC are pioneers of a lot of things for in geospatial technologies. So it was the first first time in India that we prepared a map of one to thousand, one thousand of large scale of the city of Delhi in the year 1990, 1994. So that technology we mastered using GPS and all, and then we like we create this kind of uh, uh, base maps and this services to the government of Delhi, and they've been using it since then. That is one part. Then regarding to small scale mapping, we have set up a platform known as Bharat Maps. This has got 23 layers, and the the USP of Bharat Maps is that a, it has got data of the states, it has got data of these districts, it has got data of the villages, and all the village codes, etc., are present in all this kind of data. So we tie up off with all the ministries, like say Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Forest, Mining, and a lot of other ministries who use this Bharat map services. And what they do is they, whatever MIS data they will have, they will actually try to render it the MIS data with Bharat maps and join it through the web services. So the data of there remains with them. The map services remains with us. It is hosted on a very good server provided by S3. And you can see the results. A lot of people are having a lot of dashboards. They are seeing applications. They are seeing, they are seeing the results location-wise as and where it is. So within, now coming to the granularity of the map, the applications may be that way only. 
So if you want to see a dashboard, let us say for Swachh Bharat, then you may have a city or a village as a point, and then you can see the dashboards of dashboards and what are the work progresses of all that ministry on the Bharat Map platforms. If you want to see a granularity of a city level, like say if you have to have a you have to have information of main holes, you have to have information of the smallest details of a city. Then you go for large scale mapping on a scale of one to one thousand. We have done for seven eight cities, and then recently we are doing for Noida. We are doing for Greater Noida, and we are done for Yamuna Expressway and Bombay and uh, Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Chennai, and Kolkata. So in Greater Noida, the, such a kind of portal is there that every department is interconnected. Now with that kind of portal, they were about to save around five. They were to actually. About to identify about 500 crores of land, which was, which was actually in the files. It was vacant, but they could not actually see it. They could not actually sell it. In Noida, we have given them a plot list of residential plots in the whole residential sectors of around 2,600 plots. So you can just imagine the power of GIS when it is, when it is uh, joined with the MIS of the authority. And when the authority asks relevant questions, when the government asks relevant questions to the GIS and that gets the answers. And when you get that kind of answers, your wheels turn because MIS is simple uh, Excel report. It has no relevance to space, but combine both of them and you see the results. You see how many, how, how much uh, the delivery, uh, uh, it is uh, the time that this GIS will render service to the common man. It will tell you, it will tell you that what, what is the, uh, uh, it will tell you how, ma how many, uh, uh, what is the nearest facility which is right next to you, which you could, which you could go. And believe me that even if you are staying somewhere and if you use this kind of services, you will know that I didn't know that. I've been staying here for 20 years, but I didn't know that this thing exists near my place. So that is the power of power of GIS with MIS for the local body, for the authority, for the government. Maybe it is for the forest. Maybe for the forest, we are doing a project for e-green watch. There is e-green watch in which uh, compensatory afforestations are going on. So you identify the site plantations, you identify them again, on the, whether you take a uh, satellite image again, and you identify the change. Then you identify what kind of trees are there. That is for the person, the secretary level person sitting in his office, he can do that. So it is the power of GIS plus the MIS, MIS of the CAF, the compensatory enforcement scheme, which is there in the MIS plus the GIS combined together. So that gives you such an interesting scenario, such interesting scenarios, which the government may, we are proud that we, can, we could do this kind of things with, with, the, with government. And then I would like to add on this that There are a lot of we, we need to change some kind of system also. We like we want to we want to make the people, people of India, the biggest data collectors. So that in government at NIC especially, or even or those who are in the government does not accept the person who is in the city or who is in the city as a person as a person who will render information on the map. So we may need to make mechanisms for those persons so that they can value add these maps. They can value add their complaints so that your map, your base map, and information gets enriched. Earlier, in, when I started in 1991, we were using PCR and Pro and things like that. Now we have grown. We have grown to cloud. We have grown to a lot of places. Now we have got that kind of systems, where that kind of instruments, which we can make the public man, which will make the common man as a renderer of, our, of, of your own map. So when you do that, so you just imagine that kind of information you will be having on these maps. So, and then coming back again, the kind of ICT and the kind of software will be, which will be needed for this kind of activity. So we need to realize that this should have been done years ago. Very thankfully, this policy has come now, but I am sure within my lifetime, I'll see a, a sea change, a sea change in this, uh, in this ecosystem, in this infrastructure, and it will go more than 20 times, 25 times, or 50 times perhaps. Because it was, it had not grown because of a lot of reasons, because of Ministry of Defense restrictions, all you know, these restrictions have eased, maybe up to one meter only. Okay. 
maybe ahead we will see more road administration now coming up with drones drones for a city like let us say greater noida or something you have 2 terabytes of data so the processing power needed earlier was well, now it is available but earlier it was not available so now but i was tell you one thing the, now we have we have to come into the era of large scale mapping the persons who are who are in their ground who are in their neighborhood or or are seeing the maps our bharat maps or google maps or whatever maps they want to know what is near me and they want to know the truth they want to know whether the street pole in front of me is working and if i should complain to some authority and how should i complain so that is the granularity we need the maps so then this drones comes in so we need to actually support the startups for flying for processing the drones data survey and survey have done india has done an excellent job in setting up a post network maybe should they should open up they should open up with, uh, the post network so that we can get the corrections by rovers and all so once we do that but so definitely we will do that once we do that you see that we will be like anything in another another 5 6 years we will be booming like anything so thank you so much for inviting me that's all my comments so very very very, very, very kind thing. Thing. statements uh, and uh, definitely uh, the policy change has created a very positive environment for geospatial sector in the country and you made some very important points like uh, people of india uh, we have data collectors so in a way crowd sourcing of data is a important way uh, and and then that will help in doing large scale mapping also so yeah. creating maps for the uh, this, this for the segments and areas of economy where we have short where we do not have adequate mapping available uh, I, i would just like to uh, mention that uh, there are number of uh, field mobile apps which are available now which can be easily configured for data collection of different kinds and uh, with the uh, with the easy availability of uh, smartphones it's really easy to use those apps uh, in both online and offline mode uh, in fact there is one initiative in which sri india is uh, partnering with uh, csc which is a part of meti a uh, common service centers academy uh for um, empowering uh, rural women uh by by giving them some knowledge of gis systems and gis based data collection applications so that whenever there is a survey requirement in a rural area those women folk can be can be called upon to to use the devices that they have and help in data collection and also it will give them some extra income as well So that's a initiative and uh, of government of India in which we are so participating. Uh, so hopefully these kind of initiatives will help in uh, increasing the capacity of people for data collection as well as speed up the data collection, which is the important part. Uh, I like to come back to Dr. Dhiraj Kumar. Dr. Dhiraj Kumar, you had earlier mentioned that uh, capacity is one of the challenges. Uh, of course. Uh, Uh, i mean we as a company also work with many education institutes uh, in fact close to 1000 institutes uh, of higher education that we are collaborating with in terms of uh, uh, giving at least uh, some gis uh, literacy at least one course to every student if possible but otherwise students of geoinformatics and civil engineering kind of disciplines uh, learn gis as a part of their education while they are at the colleges uh, so any any particular suggestions you would like to make uh, so that uh, as a country we can in, we can build capacity faster uh, to meet the requirements of uh, geospatial sector and the requirement is in thousands of people we the country needs people at the survey level at data digitization level as you pointed out at at level where people can uh, build apps and systems for data di dissemination create applications and go at a higher level in in building say mis data and uh, gis data together or uh, or, or getting uh, artificial intelligence and data science kind of technologies merged along with gis so what would be your uh, suggestions uh, for higher capacity creation in the country Uh, thank you agnesh ji once again uh, uh, being uh, educational institutions uh, stakeholders uh, our uh, certain requirements will always be there 
if you just talk about the number of students getting graduated from IIT, ISM, I'm talking about, talking about IIT, ISM, which has a forte in uh, earth science discipline. We have almost uh, 500 plus students that graduate every year. And they, that too in earth science discipline, that's a mining, mineral, earth sciences, environment sciences, and so on. And in each of, of, of all of these uh, BTEC programs and master's programs, we have at least one or two GIS and geometric courses. Maybe somewhere we have surveying course, somewhere we have advanced remote sensing course, somewhere we have course on GIS. But uh, what we lack here again, we give practical input to almost all the students. But in terms of practical inputs, again, our hands get tied. We have some use cases uh, uh, on consultancies, on R&Ds, those we just give input to the students. But if we have some connects with industry, particularly uh, GIS industries or GIS uh, OEM, uh, so like uh, ESRI or similar uh, institutions or the organizations who can come and support us. Yes, you have lots of use cases with you on different segments. And then you have an enabling environment also. You have uh, all these softwares, tools, and technologies available with you. We can get some number of licenses procured from you on annual basis, maybe 100, 50, or 200 maximum. But uh, think of the volume when we are more than 500 students graduating in these disciplines. We cannot, we cannot uh, uh, put that much investment on getting just licenses only for these uh, so many number of students getting to their requirements. There, uh, my request, certainly my request would be that a uh, uh, giant like ESRI should get associated with IIT, ISM, or IIT, IIT level of institutions or institutions who has some sort of responsibility of our capacity building, they should get attached with uh, ESRI and uh, carry out some of the training programs for our own students and uh, industry uh, executives. Give some diploma level of uh, certifications, maybe uh, IIT can run its uh, own diploma course in the name of DIIT. And uh, uh, you have your capabilities, we have our capability in teaching, and let us let us uh, uh, work together for doing the capacity building. And it won't be only capacity building. Uh, I was listening to our uh, uh, analysts, they were talking about, and even you were talking about innovators. We have just uh, built up the startup ecosystem in the country. And if you just talk about the startup ecosystems, you find you will find out that there are very few startups who have started working on geospatial technologies because there is a tough competition across the globe in geospatial technologies. And here, our role will be very crucial that we can promote some of the startups who will be working in these areas itself. They, they, they can devise some sort of data collectors, they can devise some processes and some technologies for uh, processing the data. And we will be again leading to Atnivar Bharat. That should be my sort of suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tinesh Kumar. I think very, very good suggestions, and I will. Uh, uh, whatever your recommendation has been for SRE, uh, we'll definitely uh, take it up. And to some extent, we do take it up. Uh, we have certain programs for large uh, universities and educational institutes where uh, the software is available at a very, very affordable uh, uh, level. But, but nevertheless, I think we should uh, we should work more uh, with augment with uh, institutes like yourself in ensuring that more and more students can get a chance to learn GIS. And, and definitely, it's, uh, uh, we will do that. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your comment. And uh, uh, Mr. Rathi uh, wanted to ask you another question. Uh, uh, sir, uh, some, uh, someone, some minister has walked in. So he's just in a meeting. So I would call him. You can take the next speaker. Okay. So I would like to. Sure, sure, him. no problem. So I will. Uh, uh, Dr. Datta, one more thing which I wanted to ask you was uh, about this uh, open data is a very it's very critical to driving innovation by leveraging geospatial infrastructure in, in very in many unique ways. While the new policy takes extensive talks extensively about data dissemination. How do you think the data availability for citizens, academia, and businesses can be improved? And also, how can a collaboration be created uh, with other ministries like Earth Sciences, Environment and Forest, Roads and Highways? These are the ministries who, who create and contribute data, which is uh, important for various other sectors. And uh, 
if the data is available to different sectors, then if, if the value of the data will be much, much more. Yeah, actually, you know, like uh, if you see the, as far as the, you know, the geospatial data uh, and the data availability disseminations, as far as the source is concerned, like, you know, as I've, we have already discussed, the traditional is the government, you know, like you uh, either you depend upon the, the Survey of India or, you know, NRSA, uh, you you know, as a source. Uh, to a certain extent, you know, NRSA has uh, liberalized like, some of the data are available now for the you know, academia. Survey of India is uh, as, a, uh, as a policy also also talked about that the liberalizations of the data. But, you know, like if you see uh, the, the, the culture within the government system itself, it, it has an, uh, you know, like I will say the extra technological layer for making this, you know, data uh, available. So I think that is like we should keep that as that as a source, but the more focus of because of this, you know, liberalization guidelines should be the, you know, the private sectors and the civil societies, they are, you know, working and the collecting the data and making it happen. Actually, in the, uh, if you see the civil society, there like, like there is a, uh, you know, FEA that the, um, uh, what is the, the, the environmental, uh, you know, the federation of the environmental uh, agencies like that's an NGO. They are doing, in, in, uh, you know, a very good job of correcting the, the large scale data during this COVID and the post COVID situations and making that available to the, uh, you know, the other stakeholder for analysis for the, you know, the geo, geo analytics in order to develop relevant informations for the, 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 the post COVID socioeconomic uh, recovery. Similarly, Many of the you know, like other academic institutions also parallelly started. So we have to look those uh, you know the sources also as an authentic source for these open data available, other than that the uh, you know the, 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 the traditional source of the government. And as far as as you were saying that the you know, working with the other uh, uh, you know the government department, I will not like you know, only say that the survey like you know on the the DST's experience. If you see the uh, in the in the total geo geospatial ecosystem the uh, department of space especially the isro is working in close collaborations with around more than 70 you know the plus uh, the ministries and the departments similarly with the national spatial data infrastructures the data you know the models and the uh, the, the ndr the national data registry developments are being uh, basically being worked with the other ministries like uh, you know, Ge geological survey of India, forest survey of India, National Bureau of the Soil Survey, and the land use plan. So these are basically the enabling environment for where to create the not only like you know uh, an efficient data uh, accessible environment, also need you know efficient way of the data storage, uh, data standardizations, and its accessibility. So the national data uh, you know the the, the registry will play at that role of the data curations and the you know the, the the data standardizations and and making data available so i think these are the uh, you know the way i i think that the, the the government system needs to be tuned out and by creating a culture of making the data you know the available and the non governmental system especially the private and the civil society should more focus on this you know the the relevant large scale data uh, the, the the collections and making it available to the others and both the government and the private and uh, these you know the non governmental system should work together to unleash these data's economic value unless that is the model we work towards we i think the guideline is a guideline its implementation lies uh, you know like the the real uh, innovations and the ingenuity at a national scale we have to show Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Datta. Very good uh, thoughts about collaboration between uh, government and, and the non-government organizations. And uh, you're very right in saying that uh, if we join hands, definitely we can make the data availability a lot faster and uh, much larger. And also the value realization can be much higher. And uh, I think these are some of the steps which uh, DST is also taking uh, uh, to, to make sure that the, in the country, we the, the overall environment for geo, use of geospatial data and technology improves and becomes much more conducive for collaboration. Yeah. 
so uh, so that's a that's a really important uh, uh, thing uh, next i would like to ask mr amit bhargav uh, mr bhargav you did mention about uh, bharat maps you did uh, did touch upon earlier uh, so so just wanted to you to share a little more about bharat maps with uh, with the with the participants of this uh, conference <coughs> that that what are the layers of these how different uh, organizations government departments uh, can work with nic in integrating the data which is coming out of bharat maps in their own applications so so the vision many departments have is to create their geospatial infrastructure but sometimes they lack data availability and uh, bharat maps is a important source for a lot of authoritative content which is being created uh, so any any insights into that any any comments or recommendations that you may have to unmute yourself we have uh, bharat map has prepared uh, on the entire india on a scale of 1 is to 10000 has been mapped on bharat maps so we have prepared built up uh, we have got layers like built up is the river water bodies and then roads railway lines then administrative boundaries are there villages boundaries are there district levels boundaries are there tehsil boundaries are there so all these kind of boundaries so 23 layers are actually there in bharat maps and it is there and it can be called as a service it can be called as a map service and it can be called as a map service from the user organization so we also provide training to the user organization to how to use this map service and consume this map service into a particular application which they can make on their own and uh, whatever we well, that is available on map service or well, we uh, this is the request for assessing this map service can be made at map service.gov.in uh, uh, bharat map uh, map service.gov.in that portal is there you can actually request then you can get a token from that and then you can request which kind of layers you want so then that layers will be provided to you and with a token so that token will be for your uh, particular website which the user department is going to make and then that token is valid for one year and again after one year you can actually uh, prepare you can actually come back and for another token so that we can renew it and so you have got a ready made map infrastructure which has got all the layers like water bodies like built up like all the then you got access to lot of uh, points of interest which we have been making with other youth government departments like atms all the country's atms are there then all the post offices are there then all the fair price of the fair price shop, shops are there then and in the school projects and all the schools are there so as as working with other government departments we have created lot of pois or points of interest so that we can share to the government departments so that they can use their it for their own uh, for the for the good of the country like that so but, and the, a lot of uh, uh, other uh, departments have made uh, applications using these map services like school gis is there so school ui gis is using bharat map and when you click on a particular uh, when you, you click on a particular school then you can see the report card of that school and that report card is coming from the mis web services of that particular uh, uh, particular department so that is the kind of uh, that is the kind of uh, leverage you can use bharat maps uh, for building your application so it has got these census scores is there so that you can actually link up your uh, data with that census code and then you can start so that, that, that there's a very very simple to use application you can call the map their service mash it up with your own uh, uh, mis data and create an application so that is available for government departments and uh, soon soon we will be also uh, uh, with the current policy we will uh, we'll, we'll come up with a policy so that all other private people can also use this bharat maps as a service so once this happens then we will have to scale up our ict infrastructure also for this purpose so that is how we, and then we are also thinking of giving a staging server well, look it is not there but we are also giving a staging server so that sandbox applications can be made by say, some people using bharat maps and all right so so in fact the data that comes from bharat maps can be a part of geospatial infrastructure of various yeah. departments yeah. That's right. uh, in, in the government sector. So uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Bhargav. And uh, let's check whether Mr. Rati has has come back. Uh, 
Sir, not yet. He is still okay. stuck with the minister. Uh, if you want, I can uh, yes. stand for him and sure. for some <laughs> joint panel. Dr. Vasudevan. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, uh, very welcome to you on this panel. And you've been, uh, you were with us last year and we had some good discussion. So, uh, what I wanted to ask was about uh, something about uh, Kashi GeoHub. Uh, Kashi GeoHub yes. is one of its kind open data geospatial geoportal in the country. And uh, it's a very unique thing. So, how do you see the GeoHub make a difference? to the city departments and citizens of Varanasi. Well, uh, thanks, Mr. Kumar, for the compliment. Yes, we are very proud of the fact that it is one of its kind. And number one, uh, we are the first among the hundred, first among the hundred smart cities uh, to create this Kasi Hub portal. And uh, it has been a very good and welcome step. And people are uh, even yet to digest the fact that the uh, special data is available on our open data platform because the government of India has got an open data platform, it has got uh, the linear data. Uh, so they are yet to digest the fact and they are still experimenting and exploring. And a lot of people have a very active participation. We have a lot of responses and queries. And recently we have floated a hackathon based on this uh, GeoHub. And uh, we are trying to propagate and tell the city level departments how they can make use of we have active collaboration with IIT, BHU. And unfortunately, due to the COVID, you know, the students' activities have been endless. I am sure in the coming days, uh, it will be an eye opener. It will be a great learning tool for the students and the other communities and other developers and uh, the individual IT companies and uh, even a common citizen can make good use of it. And uh, COVID has been a dampener ever since we inaugurated it. And we are uh, going to unleash it in a full form in the coming uh, days and months. And I think the entire city will stand to benefit out of this. And uh, not only the city, even people outside the city could uh, download the data, the special data, and develop applications. I think it is a great step. Uh, and thanks to ESRI in uh, supporting and developing this. And I think in the coming days, it is going to be the top of the top. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A lot of vision and, and direction from your side also helped us in, in supporting this particular activity. And uh, you and Mr. Rathi have been quite instrumental in setting the vision for Varanasi Smart City among the, 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 it's among the best in the country today. The amount of progress you all have made in Varanasi is really, really astounding. So uh, just I will uh, come back to all the panel participants one by one, just in case they have any comments. Anything further to add about uh, uh, creating a geospatial infrastructure for the nation? So uh, Dr. Dhiraj Kumar would like to add something to, to what you already said. Anything that you'd like to mention further? No, that's uh, that's perfectly fine uh, with us. Just we wanted to have uh, ESRI Center of Excellence uh, getting uh, set up at uh, as at least some of the hubs uh, in the country, so that uh, the very big mission of capacity building in the country on geospatial technology can be laid. Uh, the way Dr. Datta uh, was mentioning about setting of national center for geodesy and having uh, working in the hub and sport model and throughout the country, there will be several hubs. They will be having local center of geodesy just for the capture building. So DST as such is doing tremendous work uh, in uh, populating the hard infrastructure facilities, giving the infrastructure facilities. Now we want uh, ESRA to come forward and we will be uh, supportive to that extent possible. We will have some funding also, but at the same time, we look forward to see lots of contents are there with ESRA. Those contents are to be basically shared with us uh, with as a sort of partnership sort of program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dheeraj. Uh, Dr. Datta, would you like to add something? I uh, Not really, but you know, I just want to say that, uh, you know, the UN, uh, UN GGIM has, uh, you know, uh, given the responsibility of organizing the second UN uh, World Geospatial Information Congress to the, uh, like, you know, to India. I will not suggest it. I can, and what is uh, request all of you, uh, 
uh, you know, like working in the different component of these geospatial ecosystems. Let's, uh, you know, like work together and can really, like the, the title what we have kept is the geo enablement of the global village. So that we, the our experience of, you know, the, uh, the geospatial from a technology to a geospatial as an enabler to the, you know, business, to the uh, human life, to the, uh, you know, the society that needs to be, uh, you know, highlighted to the, uh, to the world and as a, as a model, because our focus is, is, uh, like, you know, infra, not only in infrastructure, because, you know, that has been done by many of our competitive nations, rather, if you can show that the geospatial, uh, you know, as an enabler of the human capacity, and in that context, the main focus of your this sessions is the geospatial thinking. Actually, if you see that, you know, in our country, like we think only that the geospatial data informations and the GIS and remote sensing, we have to think beyond that because the, 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 uh, our uh, countries, the livelihood, if you see, there is a huge component of the spatial thinking is needed so that, you know, you know like that can give a cool factor to whatever the, the data information thing, uh, data information and technology we are talking about. Like one example is the Kashi itself. Like, you know, here basically the, 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 the livelihood and the, the, the essence of Kashi is giving a cool factor to the technology and technology is responding to that rather than technology in a, like really in, in an ecosystem where the technology is an enabler of the societal pool is an sustainable, uh, ultimately the proof of the sustainability. Otherwise, like technology cannot in any time be, uh, you know, the, the core of the sustainability. Right. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. This is uh, geospatial thinking is definitely the need. And also your message about uh, enabling the human capital Just and geospatial as an enabler for that is a, is a very good thought. And I think it's very, very pertinent uh, to have this kind of uh, vision and uh, discussion on this kind of subject. Uh, moving on to Mr. Amit Bhargav, would you like to add any, any further comments? A lot of things have been spoken in this, <laughs> in this, uh, but I just like to add that what we had done in the last 20, like I started in 1991, my career in GIS and today it is 21 or almost 30 years. So what I did in 30 years, now we will do, we will see this, the same kind of progress in one and a half years or two years with this opening of this policy, point number one. Now, second point is that as I already told you that people are expecting more. They are not satisfied with some static kind of maps and static kind of things. They want dynamic maps. They want things which they can relate to. So now they will be getting that with the use of drone policy and the drone survey which has been which has come up. So you will be seeing very good large scale maps in the country which are which will be powered by the startups. And then we will be using and everybody will be using this kind of maps so that they can be change detection can be done and a lot of things can be done. Third point is with the coming of LiDAR data and airborne radar and things like that. So you will see a sea change of the use of this kind of technology, the kind of cloud services which we have, the cloud, the kind of software is ESRI is now preparing. So from PCR info, it has come to 10.9, 10.9 uh, it is now. We have an RGS 10.9. So the kind of technological changes which we have, the kind of openings which is data for using suits and that, like that. So you will see a sea change in this policies. And then believe me that whatever, again, what I had done in 30 years, you're going to see in one and a half years. A lot of changes are going to happen. No, you're right. right. Absolutely right. Pace of things is really, really fast. And uh, technology yeah. is a field which is growing very rapidly. One thing, one thing more just I wanted to add that with the use of smartphones, we are going to collect data. Still, that data is out by seven or eight meters or 10 meters or whatever. So I would request S3 to tie up with certain companies like Trimble Catalyst is there or the other companies are there which provides online corrections. So that in their, like say your, your apps, your custom built apps or whether you can provide that kind of service, we can incorporate that kind of APIs so that we can use Trimble Catalyst apps using, using uh, RGS collector or custom based apps so that you can use that 
service or fibber or any other for, for that matter which offers corrections so that we can go down to submitter level so that thing mm -hmm. has to be addressed by the uh, industry by maybe you yeah, so I'm aware of uh, certain antenna kind of systems which that that get connected to a oh, yeah. mobile phone for higher accuracy, uh, and we do have some partners in that area. Uh, but definitely, we can we can understand more and and see that if there are more attractive solutions available for getting better resolution, better yeah, accuracy. That, that will happen. Actually, eventually it will happen. Eventually, you will you will yeah. make it happen. Right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lati. While you were away, we had, uh, I mean, there was a short question uh, which we requested uh, Dr. Vasudevan to answer. This was about regarding Kashi GeoHub and that uh, that how it has made difference to the various uh, city departments as well as to citizens. Uh, so, so he did he did give us some ideas on that and some insights. So, anything else that you would like to add? As final comments. Uh, well, I, I'm sure uh, Dr. Vasudevan laid bare what the premises and uh, how we are envisioning it as a tool or a platform, wherein uh, not the citizens of Kashi, government businesses uh, collaborate, communicate, and strengthen the uh, strengthen and further refine the data, but. Uh, now uh, we also look at Kashi Geo Hub as uh, as one single window of uh, you know free transaction and uh, a bit futuristic in nature, wherein uh, uh, wherein uh, you know we are uh, coming together as the ultimate goal of different stakeholders of society, and uh, and uh, and it's not through a uh, uh, and that transaction is not through a token of uh, you know, a, a give and take, or it's not a transaction of one coming before the other, but it's more of collaborative approach. And I, I think for a democracy, uh, this is a very healthy system to be in because it, it is very organic to the very setup of the system where all the stakeholders have to come together. So, you know, I'm giving you a very, uh, 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 not exactly a technocrat's point of view, but I'm giving you a point of view from a bureaucratic and policy making understanding that it's a it's a very healthy forum of bringing together different uh, stakeholders of the society wherein the transaction is uh, uh, the token of transaction is data and which we know is the most relevant uh, currency in current context for any nation or any country to progress and given our uh, and this best utilizes our democratic uh, setup as well as demographic dividend so, so I think I would like to add that part to it as well. And summing it up, uh, though we might be, uh, you know, we might be in early days of how we are seeing the collaboration coming up, but uh, given I'm not able to hear you. Not able to hear the last few sentences. Uh, Mr. Nati, you are not audible. Is it audible now? Yes, yes, now again. Yes, yes. Now again. Yeah, I think last about 30 40 seconds. Wow. Yeah. So basically, what I was saying was that given our democratic, uh, given that this platform brings in different forces of democracy together, and uh, in early days of uh, of uh, you know uh, footprints on that platform, but uh, given how the traction any technology gains once it have it has that escape velocity to have its own you know become its own perpetual engine, you can see that. Uh, this traction on this particular platform would help us get results so soon with problems coming in, people chipping in with their sense, with their understanding of the solutions, and it would be a really healthy democratic, uh, you know, interaction happening uh, with with the. Uh,
token of transaction being data, which you know is the most important currency in current data, current day, uh, you know, scenario. So, so this is what my two bits were. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Rati. I think it's uh, absolutely bang on that data is important. Data is the most valuable resource that we have today. And uh, that together with technology can be a great enabler in solving a lot of challenges that we are facing uh, today, whether it's uh, because of climate change or overpopulation or traffic density or urban movement of people from rural to urban and the challenges caused by that. So, so it's, a, it's a great technology and data and a combination uh, to address some of these challenges. Uh, so with this, I would like to thank all the panelists for uh, their, their participation in this uh, discussion. And I'd uh, like to also thank all the uh, participants of the conference who, are, who joined us for this panel discussion. Uh, we really had some very eminent panelists today, and they shared their ideas uh, about creating a geospatial infrastructure for the country and how it has helped or already helped in many areas. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all the panelists and, and, the, and the participants of the conference. Thanks.